Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm back actually at my house in the garage. Behind me is my KA. So today I have the chance to put some work on the engine. So I'm gonna be taking off this intake manifold again and cleaning up a lot of this clutter in here that is not gonna be necessary. So like I said, I've already removed the spider web of vacuum lines that's on the back of the head that comes on the KAs. And then I've already deleted the EGR with a squid plate that I bought. So I'm going to be taking off the manifold again to remove the swirl control valve with the butterflies. And then I'm going to see if I can remove some of the coolant hard lines that run to the throttle body because I won't be needing that. And then there's just a couple other one-off things that I'm going to have to cut off and then weld in and then grind and a bunch of, just a variety of different things that I'll have to be doing today. All right, so with the manifold off, this is actually what I've been talking about. So this is a swirl control valve here, and it literally controls these valves inside the runners. All right, so right now I'm just gonna loosen them with the gun. I just dropped one inside. So that's the first butterfly valve out. They look like this, they're just little plates. I'm pretty sure that S14s actually did not come with these. I'm not 100% sure. But I think Nissan deemed it unnecessary. Okay, so I have all four butterflies out. And the next step is just gonna be to remove the actual valve now. Now there is that rod running through it, which is just attached to the valve. Okay, so there's one more Phillips head right in the middle of the intake runner is right there. So once that is out, you can actually just pull out the entire valve and the rod assembly that runs through it. Okay, and there's just one little rubber seal in here that is kind of being a pain in the ass to pop out. There we go. I <laughs> bent my pick. <laughs> Okay, so with everything removed, that leaves an exposed hole in the intake manifold. That needs to be sealed up. Uh, I was watching an offbeat garage video and he just recommended getting a metal plate or aluminum or steel and then just JB welding it on to seal it off. I'm gonna go with his advice and I'm gonna hope it works. It seems like it'll be solid enough. It's not like my naturally aspirated KA is seeing a crazy amount of airflow. So we'll see how it holds up, but I'm gonna do the JB weld method on this. Okay, so I cut out a little piece of steel, then just cleaned it up with a floppy disk and some sandpaper. So now I'm just gonna shape it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna cut off a little right there, just so it's not extended out across the manifold. Just get rid of that corner, and it should be good to go. So this is actually my first time using JB Weld, but it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, just apply equal parts of hardener and the steel and then mix them together. Just using another piece of metal to kind of scrape it together. Scrape a smooth surface across the entire plate. And once it's mixed up to about a dark gray, I think, gonna slap the plate on and let it sit here and dry for a little bit
Okay, so right now while the RTV is drying, I can't really touch it. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is actually removing this water channel and then welding a cap onto it. Okay. Had to upgrade tools for real quick. <laughs> so I didn't film it because filming welds can actually damage your camera sensor, but I'm also by no means a good welder. I don't have, I have a crappy Harbor Freight box welder that like doesn't even use, it uses pre-shielded wire or flux instead of having a gas tank, whatever. But anyways, yeah, this is the final product. I just welded it on a plate. It's not even clean at all, and I just sprayed it uh, aluminum to protect it with ceramic paint and now I'm just gonna put it back on. But yeah, I, I tested it with water and it doesn't leak, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, what I'm actually gonna do with this piece is I'm gonna grind off the elbow and then literally just fill the hole with welds. So anyways, I got the block off plate on. I just added some silicone, so I'm letting that dry while it's hand tight, and then I'll retighten it later on. JB Weld over here, still drying. So, my hands are really sticky right now from RTV. Anyways, I'm actually pretty satisfied with the amount of work I got done today. Uh, I've been here for a couple hours now. I just can't resist the urge to drive that car in the dirt. I actually really wish I was filming when Sewell and I were driving in the fire road by my house. That was so much fun. That was a lot more aggressive because I got more comfortable. I'm actually back in my hotel now, and as I went to edit the footage, I realized I didn't film an outro. Anyways, I'm really excited to get the engine ready. It's It's been so many, I don't even know, it's been maybe five months since I've driven the 240, so that's way too long. I just want to get it back on the road so I can enjoy it again. I used to go on canyon drives at least once a week with that 240, so I really need this car back. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not, and make sure to smack that like button. Peace out, and I will see you guys next time.